So uh, welcome everyone to the science circle. My name is Baragon Betts. My real name is Matthew Burr, Matt Burr. Um, the science circle is a um, grant funded nonprofit organization based out of the Netherlands. Um, uh, as a, uh, um, so I want to, um, you know, advise everyone to be on your best behavior. Uh, don't grief us or spam us or whatever. Um, uh, we want to be well behaved uh, for, uh, for grant purposes and so forth. Um, the Science Circle is uh, organized uh, uh, for the purpose of developing virtual world platforms for education. And one of the things we do uh, is uh, present these, um, uh, well, really weekly presentations on scientific topics. And once a month, I host a panel discussion, um, uh, usually trying to assemble a panel of two or three uh, experts on a topic to discuss a topic. Um, you can find, um, so as a consequence, uh, these, um, Sessions are recorded and uploaded to the Science Circle website and also to YouTube. So this will be recorded. So please do not enable your microphone. Uh, myself and Pathfinder are the um, uh, only people who will be using voice. Um, but feel free to comment or ask questions in nearby chat with text. And we will do our best to keep track of that and respond to you. Um, uh, let me, I will post a link to the Science Circle YouTube channel if you're curious to uh, look at our past events and scientific discussions. Um, some of you may be interested to know uh, this past month, of course, uh, we have done a number of sessions related to um, COVID-19. So I think uh, you might want to go and review some of our uh, previous um, presentations with regard to the virus. So um, with that sort of housekeeping out of the way, I'd like to introduce our guest today. I think he probably doesn't need too much introduction, Pathfinder Lester, um, uh, who has been holding um, office hours here in Second Life recently, uh, which I want to recommend everyone attend. And um, uh, so, and today uh, we wanted to take advantage, uh, well, actually, uh, while I'm thinking of it, I did also want to welcome uh, newcomers to this. I think um, uh, we, uh, this particular uh, event today is uh, attracting some new people to the Science Circle who may not be familiar with, or maybe this is your first time here. Um, so, uh, welcome, and we hope uh, you'll come back from time to time to see what's going on here. <clears throat> and one of the things we wanted to do uh, today is take advantage of Pathfinder uh, in Second Life uh, with his expertise regarding virtual world platforms and just the internet in general. And um, also, um, considering that Many people now have to interact socially or do work online. Uh, I kind of wanted to give him an opportunity to just kind of talk about that. What are his strategies uh, that he wants to talk about regarding um, how to use the internet and use virtual platforms in the context of the quarantine or the lockdown? Um, so, uh, uh, Pathfinder, uh, with that said, why don't you make some, uh, please feel free to jump in, make some introductory remarks, uh, uh, let us know kind of what's on your mind initially today to talk about. Sure. Uh, thank you for that introduction. And, um, um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's interesting. Well, I'm right? having a little technical issue. It doesn't hear ah, me there again. We go. Do you hear me, sir? <laughs> Do you hear me, Baragon? Check. Uh oh. I Is uh he doesn't hear me. Does he see chat? Do you hear me? Here we go. I'm speaking. Uh no. Uh Pathfinder, I do not hear you. I don't I see your white dot, 
but I don't see voice. Uh, okay. You. Uh, the sound waves coming out. Everyone here. Let's see. I'm, everyone here hears me, but you don't hear. Me. Yeah, that's super weird. Uh, let me check. Maybe I. Let me check to see if I have a. Uh, any kind of a settings issue. I think in the. Let's see. What I'm going to do is I know everyone can hear me in the audience here. Uh, oh, I'll do something. Oh, fun. looks like. I'll do something. Be good fun. to go. <laughs> hmm. We'll wait and see. Give him a moment. I'll just keep yeah, talking. This is, so I not, have not had me. an issue with voice in a long time. Okay. Um, um, not quite sure. Oh, hang on. I have know you tried turning is. it on and off again? Have you tried yes, turning nope. it on and off yep, again? Yep, I got it. I got it. I fixed it. Okay. Carry on. Carry on. All right. Again, cool. I appreciate your patience. No, 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 no worries at all. Let me um, uh, let me fix something on my end here real quick. Uh, okay, and save this. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. Well, you know, it's, the show must go on, right? <laughs> um, yeah, first of all, just, it's great to see so many people here. And I, I think I, I ran around and I added, I did a, you know, added people as friends. Um, I always like to stay connected with people as friends and and if i didn't hit you please add me as a friend if you would like do that you know whenever you want do that right now if you want if i if i if you don't want to be my friend that's fine i just like being i like the friends connection because it's all about um presence right and that's where i kind of want to start today thinking about what to talk about and it's um how many of you here have noticed like when you're logging in it's like oh my goodness all these people who are on my friends list i haven't seen them in ages and they're there they're alive right it's like it's like dr seuss like horton hears a who it's like we are here we are here you know you suddenly they pop the voices pop out and everyone's um every single day um i know the cube yeah we can only hope people are alive and it, it, it's you know, a lot of people it's it's so it's, it's crazy times hard times and uh, but i think it's just wonderful to see when people log on just that oh these people are suddenly i notice them and people are reaching out to each other it's um it's it's really amazing to see uh the um the connections that are being made as people are are coming back into these online environments and i think uh, like and in particular in second life here so i think that's um just a sort of a th an initial thought i think it's just I couldn't agree. Be with aware. You more. Be aware of of um, people popping up, and if you see someone pop up, just reach out to them. Because I have had so much joy in my life just the past couple weeks. Just people suddenly reaching out to me, I'm like, oh my god, how are you doing? I just had, you know, today already three people who I haven't heard from in um, on any platform for for like a year or so, and all of a sudden they're pinging me in Second Life. So spend some time when you log in. You see all those names fly by. Just go like, "Hey, how you doing?" You know, because in every situation, no one said like, "Oh, I'm busy. I can't talk now." You know, it's always like, "Oh my God, yes, hi," or, you know, "Oh, let's schedule some time to get together." So, um, um, it's so true. Uh, you know, I also noticed in the destination guide, for example, that there's uh, an event um, for people returning back to Second Life. You know, a shopping event, um, mm -hmm. which I think is just an indication of how many. Um, uh, either new people or returning people are, uh, 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 are, 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 are coming back to second life. Yeah. 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 And it's, um, and while you were gone, well, you weren't really gone, my friend, we were, we were listening to everything you were saying and, and we will forgive you for, you know, for, for mild cursing <laughs> that you were making. I totally figured, but it was just, it was just like, it's like, you know, someone with the microphone on and they don't know it's off. I mean, they don't know what's on, and they're like, "Damn it, damn it!" And and we were, we were, we, we all forgive you, and we all because we've all been there. Um, <laughs> I wasn't even aware I was cursing. Like, so. damn it, damn it, <laughs> damn it! Uh, that's fine. Very mild, very mild. 
Um, um, but anyway, the uh, we were talking about uh, I, well, I don't even know how the topic started. I was just sort of you know feeling I was just speaking because I was hoping that you would hear me just speaking you know with the microphone, and I, we were talking about you know something about where we were where we were living, and somebody brought up Nantucket, and I was like, yeah, I used to spend summers in Nantucket because my aunt, my uncle lived there, and I was telling a, a, a wonderful story about um, how when I was a kid, I was like eight years old. And my, I was eight or ten. My brother was a few years younger, and my uncle Albert. We were on Nantucket Island, and he said, uh, "Hey guys, um, get in the car, you know, in his beat up Jeep, and get in the car, and we're gonna go visit a friend, and uh, I think you'll like him." And we go there, and we get to this house, and the front door is stuck, and I hear somebody inside going, "Go around the back. The door is is jammed. You know, I, it's not working. It's this little house, you know, near the beach." And um, we go around the back, and the door opens, and it's it's Fred Rogers. Holy moly! Yeah, his family has or had, maybe they still have, a small, uh, small little house on Nantucket Island, uh, the beach. And he came out, and I was just, I was just amazed. And um, and like while you were talking to, uh, there was a story, and I, let's see, I'll put. Yeah, I can see you trying to, uh, uh, res an image there. Yeah. There it is. There we go. There we go. So that's uh, I'm the. It's slowly popping in. Yeah. yeah. 1973. I was seven years old. I was in. I was born in 67. So I was seven years old. Or no, 67. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. Okay. That is fantastic. And that's my that's little iconic. brother. I'm the yeah. one wearing the, the like, those striped pants. That was all the rage in the 70s, early 70s, right? <laughs> and that's the beach behind the the oceans behind him, and mm -hmm. um. And just thinking about also these, you know, everyone's coming online. We haven't seen people in a long time. And there's a reason I just read this. Um, um, you know, we, we're, we're, see, we're reconnecting with people we haven't seen in a long time sometimes. And there's an interesting thing that happens with memory. It's like we, we forget the details about who, we're, what, maybe even like what we talked about with these people or or what the situation was where we met them. But the one thing we never ever forget about interactions with people is, is how they make us feel. You never forget that. And I don't remember what we talked about after he came out that door. I don't remember at all what we even did. I don't even remember that picture being taken. Up to, you know, I remember going there, but as soon as he came out that door, I don't remember anything about that. But I remember how he made me feel. It was just it was amazing. It was just the nicest kindest feeling I can imagine and and um, and I think as we're reconnecting with all these people coming back into our lives um, I think it's just wonderful how um, and I'm, I'm experiencing that too it's like I don't remember what we were talking about I can't even remember what what was the context of us meeting but I just have this really good feeling about you and I feel good so um, I think that's just a very special opportunity we all have here with these yeah uh, that's right it, it, you know that looks like an old style polaroid picture which yeah is also yeah it was yeah yeah it was i yeah. found the physical photo and i stayed laid it on my table state of the art uh instant photography in the day yeah, uh, yeah. well uh let me um so uh, you know as i mentioned our topic uh, today is really to kind of uh explore uh, how we can uh, take advantage of the internet and virtual platforms during this time um, are there, you know, are there any platforms uh, that you're particularly excited about um, uh, that uh, you want to recommend or, or maybe warn us away from or anything like that? Uh, kind of what's on your mind? What what what's what's what are what, what's hot right now as far as this goes? I know that some people are, for example, everyone is using Zoom, but I think there's some concerns that Zoom can be hacked, and there are concerns about TikTok, for example, that. It's that the Chinese are spying on TikTok and things like that. So, um, kind of given, kind of in that context or that milieu, uh, you know, what are your thoughts about the use of virtual platforms uh, for the quarantine? Um, that's a good question. I think um, the reality of the situation here, because this is a very special uh, context, right? This isn't just the context of a lot of people are using tools and what's where are good tools for this or that. The context here is um, 
everyone has been pushed into the deep end of the pool of online communication. Literally, like we've been pushed, thrown into the deep end. That's right. Of the Sink pool. or swim. Sink There's or swim. no option. There's no option. It's not like, yeah, you should figure. It's like, no, figure this out. All you students, no, no, just go home. No, go home. You can't stay here. We're not saying you should. We're just saying go. Same with businesses. Same with uh, families. Yeah, yeah, that, that Easter family thing, no, you're not going to do it. You can't. It's not you shouldn't. It's you can't. Um, so people have been pushed into the deep end and the, of the pool and the water that everyone's swimming in is, is online, online communities, on, you know, the online computer mediated communication, online communication. And this I feel like, yeah, it feels like people are being pretty creative about it. Um, you know, I like, I like what Jimmy Fallon has been doing, um, yeah. to operate his show, uh, with all of his guests remotely. And yeah. um, uh, who's the guy from Green Day? Billy Joe yeah. has yeah. been doing a bunch of really clever uh, music covers that he posts. And okay. even just today, the Beatles did a live stream on YouTube, a sing along of the Yellow Submarine movie, uh, you know, that had 70,000 viewers. Yeah, uh, yeah. So there's a lot of creativity being used to try to create um, a social life uh, on the internet. True. One interesting side effect of that is with, uh, especially with comedians tr doing these, like, hey, I'm going to, to film something at home, me doing something. You, uh, you're realizing two things. One, wow, those makeup departments really do a lot of work on people. <laughs> because, and holy air. cow, this person <laughs> looks like me. They look like me when I wake up. And second of all, and I'm going to be gentle, but I'll be honest. Wow, they really need, they their their writers are really important. Because if they're just ad-libbing, hmm. They really need good material from their writer group, <laughs> you know, because sometimes it's hit or miss. It's you know, it's like <laughs> it's it's like yeah, you're talented, but man, yeah, your writers are awesome. Because now without them, uh, I'm realizing that you're much more spotty. And you're, yeah, I think and you're, uh, I think comedians, teams. especially comedians, yeah. I think feed off the energy of a live audience, and so when that they're too. just performing yeah. alone in their house, you know, it yes. just doesn't have the same energy. Excellent point. Yeah, excellent point. Yeah, and that dynamic. That, that, I mean, that's what acting is, right? It's 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 a relationship with, with your audience. It's uh, and that's why it, it, it takes real talent to do things like you know. Um, there's a difference between theater and motion pictures, and and especially with you know CG. CG yeah. Is looking at you're talking to green screens. You're not even talking to people. You're talking to something that's going to be filled in later by a by a uh, 3D model or an animator. But um, it's hard, yeah, and with educators too, there's this difficulty. So, so to just get back to that thing though, like you know, so this, this high-level thing that I think is important to remember is that we've been pushed into the deep end of the pool, and when you're drowning, you grab at whatever is right there, the easiest to grab onto, mm -hmm. um, and that tool right now is Zoom. And the yeah. reason people are like, why is Zoom so popular? It's been around for nine years. Why aren't people using Skype? Why aren't people using Google Hangouts? Why aren't they using WebEx? It's because Zoom is the easiest teleconferencing app to get into. It was started nine years ago by a uh, here left. Uh, I think it was WebEx. Yeah, it was WebEx. They left one of the big teleconferencing uh, group conferencing um, companies, and they left because they said this this is just too hard. It's too hard for people to use these platforms, and it's like they're always you know it's like I'm going to leave and I'm going to just make something that is so super easy. You just click and boom, you're in. Right. There's no other platform that does it, and it's interesting right. too because the engineers at the time they were like. Yeah, we can build that, but you know, you're gonna have to kind of play it loose and fast with security. You're gonna have to do some kind of little things on the back it's end a, that maybe a, a little dicey, yeah. dodgy with your security settings. And he's like, I don't care. We'll fix that later. What I want to do is make it super, super simple. And fast forward to today, that's exactly what happened. People have jumped in, and now they're starting to realize, oh, there's some security things. And so now, you know, yeah. Zoom is, is 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 you know has to really seriously think about patching some of that. Oh. I think Zoom is great for like family get-togethers. My family, we had a we had a Zoom meeting for my brother's birthday. Mm -hmm. um, and we all live we live all around the country. My family is pretty big. I think for things like that, Zoom is perfectly fine. I think the security issues mainly crop up in a business context where you're trying to do business meetings, um, where you know your company maybe might be uh, uh, attract um, you know some mischief. Um, but I think for personal use, I think Zoom is 
perfectly fine. It seems to. Be. Well, and I, you know, I, I, would, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know, I don't subscribe to the I'm not important enough to be a target uh, argument <laughs> at all. I don't because I have a background in computer security, and here's the here's the thing, man. That used to be the case. It's like, oh, I'm just a little fish. No one's going to catch me. Well, guess what? The, because people think of it in terms of a one-on-one -on -one hack. They think, like, there's some dude in China sitting there with a hood on, like in, like, like Mr. Robot, and he's zeroing in on you, right? But if you actually watch Mr. Robot, you, re you suddenly realize, like, wow, most, a lot of the tools they have are basically these big nets. Hackers have these tools that are nets that basically go, like, I'm just going to click and run this one script, and it's just going to kind of, like, I don't know, poke at the, you know, the router of everyone in this city. And see if I can get in, and if, see if I can find some vulnerabilities. So there is a attacking yeah. at scale. At, so it's like, yeah, I'm a small fish. No one will try to catch me directly. It's like, no, yeah, they won't, because they'll catch you in a net. They'll catch you in a giant sieve net, and they're picking up you and a hundred thousand other people who left your routers open a little bit. And if Zoom has some security flaw, as you know, a zero-day exploit no one knows about, they're going to find it, and then they're suddenly going to be like, oh, they're going to wake up in the morning, somebody somewhere in China or wherever, is going to wake up in the morning with their cup of coffee, go to their computer, and see their script that ran and poked a million computers, and they're going to see a list of a thousand machines that they compromised, and they're just going to click a button and say, like, yeah, just, you know, turn on the digital vacuum and hoover up any files that are sitting on that person's hard drive and just basically, you know, the, the thing is we have our digital identities are so, um, uh, so exposed on our desktops. If, if you think about all the information someone could get when they sit in front of your computer and it's unlocked, what can they get to? That's what anyone in the world could get to um, at scale. So, well, that's, uh, yeah, that is alarming. That I had not, to be honest, had not really thought through about that. So uh, that's fantastic information. I mean um, to scare you, Mike. I mean to no. scare you, Mike, because this is a scared, <laughs> straight situation here. Um, just... Um, you should be, you know, no one, you know, you, you should be uh, not scared. You should be aware of the risks the same way you were aware of the fact that you really should have locks on your doors. You should be, you know, using, um, uh, you know, some kind of security software. I'm not going to recommend anything specific, but just there's okay. plenty of solutions out there. Just well, yeah, you know, we uh, Digital, uh, yeah. last year at one of our panel discussions, we did uh, we did a, a whole session on Internet security and uh, kind of it, it's sort of the same thing that you do need to be you need to be aware of it and you need you need to use the security tools that are available to you and it's sort of on each individual real person to kind of take responsibility yeah yeah and um yeah. and someone mentioned too like route, router security yeah that's the thing to like um yeah. your router is what's exposed to the internet when someone when, when you're surfing the internet the ip address that you're exposing is the ip address of your router so if you have like a router that maybe you haven't looked at in like a decade and it's just running old software you know might want to if it's if it's owned by our internet service provider you know you know check with them to make sure everything is good and they may be like oh shoot you're right that's an old one we need to upgrade that but uh, um, can routers be anonymized the way ip addresses can be or or a randomized well, or something no no well i mean your right. when you connect to any website there's your ip address here's here's okay here's a good site I like this website. It's called IPLeak. IPLeak.net. Just go there, and basically, okay. your I, when it says your IP address, what you see there is the IP address of your router, and it will kind of poke at you a little bit and just say, like, you know, I can. This is what I know about you. It's not. It's not trying to break into anything, but it's just basically identifying what you make visible when you browse the internet. So, like, if you go to any website, your IP address is visible. If you go to, if you connect to any service, you connect to Zoom, you connect to anything, your IP address is, you know, the IP address of your router. I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole, but just okay. um, you know, but look at that, you know, look at that page, and there's some good resources on there that maybe you know can help you. Okay. Uh, well, that sort of segues into another topic I wanted to get into, which was uh, what kind of uh, tools uh, 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 people should be aware of uh, with in this new environment. Before I do that, though, I did also want to mention you mentioned Skype also, mm -hmm. and I recently had occasion to look into the history of Skype. Um, and uh, because it did seem like it would have been a natural for this environment. Um, but, you know, S Skype went through a weird history where because yeah. it was a, it was like a peer to peer platform. Oh, yeah. Um, um, and um, uh, and after a while, it was bought by eBay for like a yeah. billion dollar valuation. Because yeah, yeah. eBay, eBay thought 
It would be a, a tool that uh, buyers and sellers could use to communicate with each other, which in, in hindsight was kind of a half-baked notion because who wants to video conference with their seller, really? You just want to, you really kind of want that transaction to be anonymous, and email is fine. You don't really yeah. want to get uh, too personal with them. Uh, yeah. And then eventually eBay sold it to Microsoft. Yeah. Um, and at, since ever since Microsoft has had it, it's kind of withered on the vine. Well, they, um, you know, it was a, um, I'm not sure if it was an acquire hire situation, you know, we're, we're where businesses uh, acquire uh, technology to also acquire to primarily acquire the engineers on the team. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. that's what it is. Sometimes it's an acquire. We're going to use your technology and we're going to fire all of you. And sometimes it's both. It's we're acquiring the tech and we're going to leverage the engineers. And I'm not sure what the status, what, what the situation is. I can't remember. What I, I don't either. Uh, Stephen uh, Zutify uh, also mentions Teams. Uh, do you have any? Are yeah. you familiar with Microsoft Teams? I have not used it, but every time I boot Windows. Um, you know the, the the team app launches. Yeah, it's uh, but I have not hell, used isn't it. it? It's, yeah. It really annoys the hell out of me. I had to I had to rip it out of um, uh, <laughs> rip it yeah. out of the operating system. It's <laughs> it's it's their Slack killer. They're trying to kill Slack. Uh, yeah. Okay. So so a lot of these tools do the same things, right? And I think for, okay. So uh, let's see tools. Um, well, first of all, yeah, Skype is interesting because it was all about P2P. It was all about this peer-to-peer -peer decentralized solution. You can't, you can't kill it. You can't stop the, the voice. You know, it's amazing. And now, of course, it's totally centralized. It's that dream has completely disappeared. So it's a totally different product now. It's all centralized. Um, but it does. It's 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 it does exactly what Zoom does. It does you know teleconferencing. It's, it does what Google Hangouts does. Um, yeah. Same tool it does what TeamSpeak does. Same thing. So with with uh, but the but the in terms of like what's the best of breed, um, uh, you know again Zoom is super easy for video conferencing. I think for security there's more more teeth to something like Google Hangouts, and Skype is still good. It's pretty secure. You know if you trust yeah, Skype, Microsoft. Yeah. yeah, Skype is still pretty good. I mean I I, I still use it. Yeah. And uh, I and I did I was speaking with someone just the other day um, who. She was saying that they use uh, uh, what is it called? A uh, Google, uh, not Hangouts, but um, what called now? Um, Team? No, not Teams. Uh, somebody mentioned it here in the local chat. Uh, or Discord is another yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. So, so this uh, is so that's a different type of app, right? So, um, let's switch gears here. So we're not talking about just video conferencing now. How do you do like group collaboration? With different yeah. text, with different conversation channels, how many here remember IRC? How many people here remember IRC? Like the different channels, you know. And so Slack, Slack is the the big the big one in in terms of, and I think the, a really outstanding uh, platform for team to collaborate. It also has built into it the ability to do video conferencing and voice chat, but it's primarily a text based enterprise collaboration tool. Um, the interesting thing is like uh, Discord is the new Slack. Discord mm -hmm. does everything pretty much that Slack does, but it's also gained a huge amount of traction among gamers. It was developed as a tool for people to run while they were playing multi-user games online so that they could have conversations and text. They could also use voice very easily. Discord's business model is also completely opposite of Slack's in that Slack, you pay Slack, the company, you pay the company to have a server and the users come in for free. Discord. The servers are free forever, but the users can optionally pay money to basically like buff their accounts. Like if you want an animated if you want an animated GIF as your avatar in Discord, you pay uh, you pay uh, Discord a little. Um, so I actually, you know, I, I I see a lot of businesses using Slack. I see Discord being used by a lot of people for just um, you know just co online communities for anything. But I'm actually actually even seeing sometimes like some businesses. Oh, you're, you're speaking of Skype. How Skype ring sound? I think. Um, um, I see Discord. Discord and Slack are, you know, like two groups from the same kind of tree. But I like Discord. I actually prefer Discord a little. Um, I don't trust uh, any kind of like Facebook for business stuff. Baragon, you're ringing. There we go. Um, I don't really trust Facebook that much for their 
enterprise tools. I don't know. It's just personally, I, I don't, I don't dig that. Um, but uh, which, which then makes me, which paints me as you know a hypocrite because I really like what the Oculus does. <laughs> I have, I think Facebook's actually done a lot of really great stuff with the Oculus, uh, their VR stuff. But one thing I will say for privacy, if you are really like, man, I just want to have private text messaging and voice calls on my phone and have it on my desktop too. Um, like if you're if you're dead serious about security, you should be running Signal here. It's, uh, that's Signal. That is a, a, a powerful encryption, decentralized uh, encryption-based decentralized P2P system. Um, actually, I'm just thinking if you watch Mr. Robot, that's the tool that they used a lot. You know, and they're like, how do they send those messages that like automatically self-destruct and are super secure? It's like Signal and the um, it's a real app, and, it, and it's really, um, uh, it's really, uh, really good for secure voice and. Uh... Uh, uh, very good, thank you. Uh, sorry for my interruptions there, but uh, I, I, I muted uh, uh, muted my audio there, so that won't happen again. Um, uh, that's fantastic. Um, so it seems to me that. Uh, a lot of these tools can be used sort of synergistically, um, you know, so that you might want to um, be aware of creating um, maybe a suite of platforms and tools or applications, um, uh, uh, you know, because I think um, this situation may endure for, you know, quite a few more months. So I think in time, people will just um, sort of uh, begin to collect uh, the various uh, uh, platforms and tools that really work best for them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, and you know this could um, uh, you know if you extrapolate out it could be kind of transformative because it will be weird uh, once we get kind of experience living this way it will seem weird to go back to normal life. Yeah, and. Um... The um, yeah, that's interesting. How do I say this? Um, the the world has changed, right? And it's going to stay changed. I, I I you can argue that we can debate that, but I strongly feel um, that this is not going to. If you look historically at any kind of grand change like some event you know not just pandemics and things but any kind of big thing you know like world war ii world war one shit the great depression but wenza and all that you know all these things going back in time those were things that ended all these things those things ended and the world never snapped back to the way it was before that was always like oh yeah that's remember, right remember and then also things like you remember little things like yeah you know remember remember rubber tree plants and and rubber that was made from rubber tree plants. That was the way rubber existed for decades and decades, you know? And um, there were some scientists who were like, you know, we can make rubber out of with petroleum. It's like, no, we don't need that. We got rubber tree plants. Great. Isn't it great? Then World War II happens. And all of a sudden, people are like, yeah, yeah, we need a lot of rubber. We need, you know, we need all the rubber. We need more than all the rubber. All the rubber tree plants are just, we can't grow them fast enough. It's not scalable. And all of a sudden, you know, but yeah, those scientists who were making, you guys, come over here, you know, tell us, show us how you can, can you ramp this up? Oh, yeah, we can ramp up petroleum-based rubber products, just crank them out. World War II ends. Did everyone go back to rubber tree plants? No. So, you know, that's dead, dead in the water. That whole industry died, and the, you know, petroleum-based rubber companies just became the norm during the war and afterwards. It's just like, yeah, this is it. The world has changed. The war is over. We don't need that much rubber as we did during the war for all the tires and rubber products for all the machines of war and um over it's the world is the world just, the world just uh shifts and and i think um you know what's happening here is um we're all, we've all been pushed into these this pool of online online interactions for everyone we're all housebound we're all under house arrest that's what it is let's be honest this is house <laughs> we're all under house arrest this is why we feel kind of guilty when we go outside it's like, i feel like i'm breaking the law that's what house arrest feels like I haven't been in house arrest, but it's that's crazy. Yeah, it's you know it's a legal uh, thing that says you can't leave. 
And um, and I, and what's going to happen is people are going to go back. They're going to be like, I can't. Well, when the when the house arrest ends, people. Oh yeah, I'm going to go back. I'm looking forward to going back to the office and all this stuff. And then they're going to go back to the office and they're going to be like, Yeah, this feels good. But wow, that two-hour commute every day. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do that anymore. I was able to mm. do a lot of stuff at home, and you know, it was kind of nice being with my. Maybe not every day. Right. Except, except for me, I want to be with my dog. Maybe I don't want to be, you know, you don't want to be home every day alone. You know, maybe you want to be alone from other people in physical process. You know, a people similar realize example, they want to go uh... back. They're going to want to go back. And here's, let me complete that. So they're going to want to go back and there, there's going to be a desire to, to shift more things online. And that will come from the, the just people with their just wanting their lives to be more comfortable. It will come from businesses who say, Hey, They'll realize the cost efficiencies. It's like, wow, we actually were able to do a lot of work, and we had, uh, you know, all these people working remotely. So, yeah, let's start hiring people working remotely because we know how to do this now. It's going to come from also um, businesses are going to realize, wow, we really shouldn't. Um, do we really need to pay sixty-five dollars per square foot space? You know, all those mm. all those environments, and they're also going to start realizing, you know, it's going to drive the way businesses think strategically because um, it's going to affect talent acquisition because they're going to be, you know. Um, hiring people and the whole like, yeah, we're going to pay for you to move out here and more and more people are going to go, yeah, no, I got it pretty sweet here and I can work from home because I know I could do that during the great pandemic, COVID, and uh, you can fly me out there once a quarter, but I'm not going to uproot myself. Good, good gig here working. Yeah. You know, uh, a, a kind of a similar example is ice. Um, you know, um, in the 19th century, before refrigeration, ice was harvested mm -hmm. like for example oh, um, there was there, there was something i think called the great lakes ice company or something and and in the winter they would they would harvest gigantic blocks of ice that were shipped all over the world the the english when they were uh, uh, uh as colonists in india would drink their gin and tonics with an ice cube that was sent to them from the great lakes in the united states we yeah. shipped all the way to India for their gin yeah. and tonics. They would like but pack them in sawdust. And, and then, and then refrigeration was developed, um, and uh, and the ability to uh, make ice in your freezer, um, and then uh, just completely obliterated that uh, uh, that industry. Um, and that's just a reflection that the that the, the, the you know the advent of refrigeration and being and uh, and freezer technology. Just obliterated that technology, and we never looked back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, one thing I do want to say too about you know we're talking about gathering collections of tools. And that's the way to do it, right? You know, different tools for different. No one just uses one tool all day long. I use Slack, and I use you know Zoom, and I use you know you know Signal, and I use a whole bunch of other tools. And we you know we all use virtual. Well, not all of us, but here. I'm preaching to the choir here. We all here use virtual worlds. But here's the thing. Here's a key thing that I'm seeing. Um, so many of these collaborative technologies, well, any of these, any modern collaborative technology like, technology like video conferencing and text chat, they do a great job at keeping us connected. But they don't give you a sense of being with someone else. They don't, you don't get a sense of being with someone in a shared place. And our brains are wired to want to be together in shared places. So when you hear about Zoom fatigue, this is fascinating to me. There are all these different reasons mm. for Zoom. You can hear for Zoom fatigue, just looking at too many eye, making too much eye contact and so forth. That I have my, my own personal mm. higher level, uh, as high as I can think, theory about this. is, uh, you know, When you log into something like a multi-user Zoom call, you don't have a sense of togetherness because the conversation isn't happening anywhere. It's happening on a screen full of talking heads, literally in boxes. And, you know, your mind can't wrap around, our minds can't wrap around this kind of distorted reality. It's, it's not what your mind is used to. And, and so um, your mind kind of defaults into this, this confused state and it's trying to figure stuff out. What happens when your mind try, is working hard to figure some, something out? You get tired. You get exhausted after too many of these video conferencing calls with too many people. And, and the thing is a lot of people are you're hearing it more and more now. People are feeling tired and frustrated with their, with Zoom fatigue, and they don't understand why. And and I think at the highest level, it's because we're tired and we feel frustrated with using things like Zoom exclusively because our minds long for an online environment that more deeply speaks to our human nature. 
Well, we yeah, let me part share... of a shared space. We want to be part of yeah. a shared space. We want to be in an environment, exploring places with people while we collaborate and, 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 and work together. So I think what's missing from this tool set are, are environments that offer a sense of place. And that's why you're seeing people starting to come into environments, you know, like Second Life, and they're going, wow, I just... I just feel so much better in this environment, and uh, I just got out of a 20-person Zoom call, and I'm exhausted, but then I'm hanging out here with 20 people, and for some reason, I just I just feel good. Yeah, let me kind of share my uh, personal experience out of that, because I think it's maybe illustrative. I don't know um, uh, how many others here might share this, but, you know, I live alone, um, and uh, I with my cat, um, and... So I find that when, um, like, if I'm going to watch Netflix or watch TV or watch YouTube or something like that, often those um, experiences, to me, just make me feel alone. They just emphasize how alone I am because I'm not watching it with anybody. If I want to react to something I'm watching, there's nobody there to react with. Um, so I tend to sort of put off uh, that sort of thing um, until late at night, like when I'm getting ready to go to bed and stuff like that, um, when it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah. um, the uh, and then I I also share the same sense that um, with uh, with Zoom um, or other chat technologies, um, there is uh, you do have that uh, loss of a sense of place or a loss of community. It's more just kind of information transfer. There is, there's not much of a sense of community, yeah. but I can spend hours in Second Life. And if I have during the day, if I have the choice of binge watching something on Netflix or hanging out in Second Life, I'll just hang out in Second Life. I can talk to people. You know, you have avatars that you, you're interacting with. You see each other, um, you know, in the full totality of their body. Um, and you're in, um, you know, some kind of fantastical setting that you love. And things like that and so, uh, you know this you know uh that's why second life is addictive i think because you can't just spend hours here um feeling social and feeling a sense of community um, yeah. that the other platforms simply don't provide yeah and the thing is we're at a period of time where everything is accelerated right so people in an accelerated way jumped onto these different tools and the big one being zoom and now in an accelerated way they're learning the limitations of those things and so now it's, it's you know two weeks ago you weren't seeing articles like i just saw someone posted a bbc article i just saw something in the new in national geographic about zoom fatigue you know two weeks ago you weren't seeing mm -hmm. those articles now they're popping up and i predict they're going to be everywhere the next yeah. thing that's going to happen is more people are going to start realizing what's lacking is this sense of place and people have already started pouring into SL. You know, I heard, uh, I was talking with Abby and he said something like new user subscription rates are going up 20%, 30%, the stuff's increasing. Um, it's wonderful. And it's just going to get faster. It's going to get faster because people are going to realize, you know, they're going to be like, what are these, what's an environment where I can have a sense of place? You already see, you're already starting to see the thin edge of the wedge, right? And that's, it's, uh, what is it, uh, Animal Crossing? Right, right, right. Seeing people go, I'm uh, playing we, Animal we, Crossing we, with my kids, and then you realize they're playing it not because they're entertaining their kids. It's like I just want to play Animal Crossing. I'm an adult. I just feel like I need to be in this space. <laughs> I need to be in a place. You're going to see them being, you know, it's like I'm playing Fortnite with my kids, and the kids are like, but you're you're just you're not playing it with me. You just want to be in Fortnite. What's going on, Dad? What's going on, Mom? You know, that's and, right. Uh, and, somebody and, uh, up in the in the local chat mentioned World of Warcraft, and I think yeah. a lot of some some games. other games like yeah. that. Yeah. That people just hang out in them. You know, uh, before I, I tried Second Life, you know, many, many years ago, um, I tried some of those uh, first-person shooter games or, you know, Call of Duty and so forth and yeah. and World of Warcraft. Yeah, and I found that I mostly just stood around in the town square chatting with people. <laughs> I like, You know, uh, I was not really that interested in doing quests or leveling up or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, a social you, you world like Second Life is, is perfect for me, yeah. Um, you hang out at those uh, crossroads and these in the, uh, you know, the uh, all roads lead to Rome kind of idea. You know, there are always places in these virtual games where it's like, yeah, I hang out at the, what was it? I used to play Lord of the Rings all the time. I always hung out at the Prancing Pony. Uh, yes, and it, it was also <laughs> mentioned in local chat that another nice thing about uh, Second Life is your the camera control so that, you know, you can, uh, you have 
full control over like yeah. how you how you view the world. I don't know how many times I've been watching a movie at home and I reach for my mouse to try to rotate the camera yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. to look around the, a corner or something like that. And I go, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and on that, and I got to mention this because we're talking about some tools here. I'm going to tell you my, my, I think it's my favorite peripheral device, I think of all time, because it's the one that I've, that has lasted the long. It's built like a freaking tank. The one that's on my desk here was literally one that was given to me by the company when I was working. Six? So 14 years, the thing still works like it's brand new. It's the um, and this is a tool that works in Second Life. It's built. We built support for it into Second Life, and it actually works with things like Google Earth. It is the the 3D Space Mouse. Ooh. The space Mouse, and it's like a. I, I think it's like. A, just check on Amazon. What is how much is a Space Mouse going? For? Um, the Space Mouse. Um. I think it's like a oh it says it's listing for a hundred dollars. I think there's like you can get it for cheaper. I've seen it. I've seen them for cheaper. And you, you also you also can get used ones on eBay because they last. The thing is that you can't kill them, and it's a it's a little like knobby thing that you basically can go into fly cam and smoothly move your camera in 3D by just kind of moving this little knob thing, and it is un. Unbelievably awesome. If you can find a used one for cheap on eBay, I would, you know, it's built, the support for it is built into the client, built into this official client and Firestorm as well. We built hooks for it into hmm. code that was then open sourced. And, um, and yes, it's a physical peripheral, but I have it on the left. Like I have my mouse in my right hand and a space mouse in my left hand. And it is just amazing for also like machinima filmers in Second Life because mm -hmm. you can just move, you can do these slow tracking shots. The harder you push on the little knob, the faster you move. Go up and down, left and right. You know, it's amazing for camera. I don't have any shares in the company. I don't have any financial, you know, <laughs> for, pit, for pitch of this hardware device. But I just. Uh, uh, it's it's one of those things that's been like stuck. It's the one thing, the only thing. I'm looking at my desk. It's the oldest thing on my desk. It's 14 years old and it is still on my desk. Everything else on my my monitor, my keyboard, my mouse, my computer, it's all different. But that one little sucker, little space mouse, is still there. Uh, uh, okay, extremely cool. I'm definitely gonna check that out. Uh, you mentioned machinima. Uh, that uh, prompted a thought. I was speaking with someone recently who created a build in Second Life for a machinima and um, and then their machinima was entered was accepted into the South by Southwest Film Festival. Nice. But then South by Southwest was canceled because of the yeah, coronavirus. Like everything. Like everything. Right. Yeah. And so I said, well, you know, why doesn't South by Southwest simply make all those films available on YouTube or some, you know, yeah. or or Netflix or something, some platform where people can see the films. And interestingly, apparently, um, the uh, fil the filmmakers are contractually bound to um, for South by Southwest to have exclusive rights to the films. Yeah. Um, and so basically, there were there were contractual issues that prevented South by Southwest from wow. making those films available on another platform. Which is really, I think, a terrible outcome for the filmmakers. Yeah. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I mean, hopefully they can figure out some way to do that to get these films out there. It would be, it would be a real shame if if uh, this entire year was lost. Yeah. And uh, I was also promoting Second Life to South by Southwest, thinking, well, I mean, uh, like live bands could perform in Second Life. I mean, bands could perform live in Second Life. Yeah. And the, the conference part of it could occur in Second Life. Um, yeah. And then people were pushing back saying, yeah, but what about all the drinking and partying? <laughs> but I thought, yeah. well, uh, South, uh, the restaurants in, in Austin could, um, uh, could provide, um, you know, uh, uh, drink coupons <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. Or, yeah. or Specs Liquor. Specs Liquor could provide, uh, you know, liquor delivery or something like that. Uh, of course, people would end up just drinking at home, but uh, yeah. but that would be some some way to about it. yeah some way to sort of creatively reproduce the experience of South by Southwest at uh, uh, in a virtual world, um, but. Uh, I have to say, you know, uh, the cancellation of South by Southwest was 
extremely controversial in Austin because it's a huge hit on the economy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And they did it very early. Yeah. They were like one of the first ones to go down. Yeah. Um, I think prompted in part because Facebook and Google both canceled their attendance at South by. I think that was a huge factor. Yeah, well, that was and, uh, that killed it. Yeah, it was and one of, the, um, one, of the, one of the nails in the coffin. Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, but now it's looking like it's looking like genius that they did that. So yeah, yeah. in retrospect, um, I know we're coming up on the hour. I wanted to make sure I got two things in here first yes. in the in nearby chat here um that's a tweet i actually re actually uh posted that today that's a link to a um a panel that i did with abby and uh robert scoble and uh and uh ruben steiger uh because i've, I've started uh ruben and i and a whole cast of characters ruben used to work at linen lab too uh he you know, we're both there at the same time. Um, we're we've um, you know we're spinning up this 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 collective and this company called Billions of Us. That's why I have billions of us over my head. But anyway, it's a video that it's a roundtable panel that we did as part of the Laval Virtual uh, 2020 conference last week. It's the largest and oldest VR virtual world conference that's been going on in Laval, France, for the past 20 years, literally 20 years. They did it all virtually, and they asked us to do a panel. Um, and and, and um, on um, on um, uh, the importance of, of I put together a proposal the importance of I wanted to talk about the importance of sense of place the importance of emotional bandwidth and how important that is in terms of unlocking people's imagination so they can actually do work better you know learning working whatever because a lot of organizations are trying to figure out it's not just individuals but whole organizations like how can we keep our team from from losing you know trust in each other and how can we make people just be more creative while they're you know because zoom calls you're not being creative when you're in a zoom call i'm sorry you're just not you know you're sort of listening to conversations and how do we collaborate and unlock creativity so there's a there's a video there that um, might give give people some insights into some of the ideas around how platforms like Second Life are are um, are really powerful and um, and again Ebby says some really amazing things on that panel, it's fantastic. And um, and the other thing I'm just going to paste in here is this, this is just something I wrote. This is just a Google uh, this is a uh, a Google Doc because people were asking me more details around like what is billions of us doing and what's the problem and I was talking to some educators who had no experience with virtual worlds and I wrote this for them and I realized I'm just going to start kind of spreading it around so that document is something that explains some of the stuff that I was talking about like why are people you know what's the what's what's wrong with how people are trying to work together and what are the limitations they're feeling and why and what is billions of us doing and basically you know we just are, are trying to um we just realize like the time this is a black swan event this is a time when all these virtual environments are just going to take off and thrive and and we think there's just so much um help that we can do just across the board in terms of helping people understand the importance of this like we're all evangelists for these platforms whatever our use of them is personal you know, we're using them for personal enjoyment or we have businesses in these environments you think of all the content creators in second life who are suddenly starting to get more business you know the more we can be better evangelists for all of this the the more everyone will win the people who have a vested interest in the success of the platforms and the people who are feeling intensely dissatisfied and frustrated because they're under house arrest so there's just so much opportunity to prove the net quality of life for everyone so um, that this document is just the beginning of some of my attempts to explain what I'm doing and I know everyone else is doing amazing stuff so if anyone else wants to reach out to me and tell me like what you're doing in terms of like your I'm just fascinated by what people are doing with their businesses in these environments, their their organizations in the physical world. How is your workplace dealing with this? You know, are you doing something really cool and amazing? And let's just figure out how we can all collaborate um, because we're, we're all in this together. We're right here, the 53 people here. This is like, you know, we're the pioneers, <laughs> right? And yeah. so we need to we need to help people because we're like the pioneers and all of a sudden we're looking over the horizon and, and we see like these masses of people moving westward and it's like what the hell you know we're we've been here we got to help these people build towns and cities and survive so so um do it absolutely uh i'm really glad you mentioned uh emotional bandwidth i think that's a great phrase for everyone to keep in mind as we seek to be uh, productive and to find community uh, online. Cool. 
So, uh, and uh, I, I know uh, there are a lot of demands on your time. I'd love to continue the conversation, uh, but uh, maybe this is maybe this is a good stopping point. And I'm glad you got a chance to uh, uh, promote your uh, your billions of us initiative. So, yeah, I mean, again, it's just you know, it's more than just a company. We see it as this creative collective, right? You know, because it's it's about collaborating. It's like we want to find other people who are trying to bring people into these environments. And and for me. You know, my role there is chief learning officer, because I, and I chose that title because my role, I want to help teach people how they can best use these environments, teach them how to develop their own best practices so that they can succeed in these environments. And I know there's so many people around here that are doing the same thing. And, um, you know, we're, we're focusing on Second Life as this initial platform because we want to do something now. We're going to be building our own stuff over time, but we just this is this is the place we need to help get people in here because there's so many there's such a net positive, right? You know, again, the people coming in will benefit, the people who are already here, the businesses, the educators in here, you know, they'll benefit. Everyone will benefit. Absolutely, amen. Yeah, I get well, I get excited about this stuff. It's, it's <laughs> just awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, uh, Pathfinder. I'm, uh, it was a real uh, real pleasure. Uh, to have you here, um, and I, I know that our uh, uh, our students uh, really appreciate it. And I want to thank everyone who attended. I want to thank Chantal uh, for uh, really kind of setting up uh, this interview, uh, a little bit of a different format from what we usually do, but we really wanted to take advantage of having, a, you know, being able to speak with you today. Uh, so, um, and with that, I guess I'll go ahead and uh, gavel this uh, session to a close. And thanks, everyone. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for coming. This was awesome. This was awesome. I'm going to leave this up here. I'll let it so anyone can take a copy if they want a copy. That movie with um, um, uh, the, the the recent movie of Fred Wright. Who the heck, who was the star? I can't, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. It's a uh, uh, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> tired. I didn't sleep well last night. Um, that was so spot on. I have so much respect for for Tom Hanks as an actor. He was so amazing because I mean, I watched. You know, I have much more experience watching Mr. Rogers as a kid than, you know, being with him in person. I met him a couple times after that. Fuck it, but... And wasn't that... I just thought that was amazing. Tom Hanks, I was like, holy cow, you just were Mr. Rogers. Now, I haven't seen that movie, and if you love Fred Rogers as a person and a human being and a, and a just what he his mark that he left on the world, um, see the Tom Hanks movie, I would highly recommend it. All right, I'm going to head out, but thank you. Thank you, everyone. And um, uh, yeah, if you see me as a friend, again, remember, all that's what we started the conversation with, the idea of friends. You know, if you see me pop up or whatever, you know, not just me, but any of your other friends, say hello to everyone because uh, we're, all, we're all in this together, and uh, it's only going to get more exciting <laughs> in the next, over the next few months, I think. Right on, John. All right. All right. Well, have a take, great have a great weekend. You too, every, and everybody take care. Wonderful to see you all. Thank you so much for coming out, everybody. I'm blown away by how many people were here. Really it was amazing. Thank you. All right. Take take care. Bye bye.